you're probably going to be like a Miles Morales uh, live action eventually, mm. and I think they're probably more concerned with me being like Prowler and that or something mm. like that. I'm too old to be Spider Man now. Like, a Spider Man can't have, like, you know. I don't you know. know. That could be interesting. Only if he dies or something like that. Yeah. I can't be, like, you know, talking about, like, I need to roll out my IT bands. You had a cameo <laughs> in Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Do you think that this was Sony's way of apologizing for not casting you as Spider Man? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think they even thought about it. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Donald Glover very nonchalantly confirmed Marvel and Sony's plans to do a live-action Miles Morales movie and bring him back as the same live-action Prowler from the MCU that we saw him play during Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse just last year as part of their larger plan to connect everything that Sony is doing with its Spider-Man movies and everything Marvel is doing with its Tom Holland Spider-Man in the MCU. So we'll break it all down because we did learn way more about what's actually going on with Spider-Man 4 behind the scenes. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big Super Bowl trailers coming this week. The Deadpool 3 trailer is supposed to come. Of course, I will do videos for as many of them as possible. But the big news, you probably saw Donald Glover just confirm some things that the Marvel and the Sony people said last year after the premiere of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So at the time, Amy Pascal, who's Sony's main producer on all the main Spider-Man movies, not every Spider-Man movie, but like the Tom Holland Marvel Spider-Man movies, she was the main producer on all the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. She's the main Sony person on all the Spider-Verse movies, too. But she's not really involved with the Venom movies or the Craven movie, the Morbius movie, the Madam Web movie, like all those other spin-off movies that Sony is doing set in the Spider-Man Venom universe. That's like a totally separate group inside Sony, Avi Arad, who was also working on the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies way back in the day. He's the person that's involved with those other Spider-Man spin-off movies. But at the Spider-Verse premiere last year, Amy Pascal, who typically says a lot that she probably shouldn't be talking about, said that they were developing a live-action Miles Morales movie alongside Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4 and the Beyond the Spider-Verse movie. There have been a couple really solid live-action Miles Morales fan films out there, too, the past several years. She didn't offer too many details on when that live-action Miles Morales movie would happen and how it would connect with Spider-Man 4 and the Spider-Verse movies. Because Donald Glover talks about how they'll bring him back as his live-action version of the Prowler that we just saw. That Prowler is actually the same one that he played in the MCU Spider-Man Homecoming movie. He didn't have any special powers like other versions of the Prowler. He just had the tech suit. Hey. Hey. It's rude to stare. Cool, that one myself. I slipped. You? Okay, I did all the work. And the idea with the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse cameo was that he had ended up in another universe outside the MCU somehow, probably the same way that the Vulture wound up in the Venom universe because of Doctor Strange's and Spider-Man's spell that first time. And that's why Spider-Gwen and Hobie Brown Spider-Punk had captured him, brought him to their Spider-Force base, and he was waiting in his cell to be sent back to the MCU universe. Because that was the whole point of them all being in the cells there. They were being sent back to their original universes. That scene was meant to pay off the evolution of his MCU Prowler from Spider-Man Homecoming. During that movie, he had just started to buy the tech from Vulture to make his Prowler suit, but he hadn't started using the actual suit yet. Cut to several years later in the MCU because we have Avengers Infinity War, the snap, the five-year time jump, Avengers Endgame, the blip, and at some point, he became the full comic book prowler. During Spider-Man Homecoming, there was a deleted scene where he specifically references the Miles Morales of the MCU, who at the time was very young and had not gotten his spider bite yet. It's pretty ballsy. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. Hate this dude, man. Yeah, sorry, Miles. I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, I'm just stuck. After the movie, several years ago, everyone kept asking Kevin Feige, Tom Holland, when they'd introduce that version of Miles Morales in the MCU. Like, he's right there. He exists already. When are we gonna actually see him? Kevin Feige has typically always said the same thing. He usually just deflects to the Spider-Verse movies, saying that we have this amazing Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse coming out pretty soon. We'll focus on that right now. Basically just trying to avoid talking about live-action Miles Morales in the MCU. Tom Holland, though, does not have this problem. Like typical spoiler bros, in the past, he's revealed that there have been plans to do live-action Miles Morales at some point. But I'm just excited for us to introduce Miles into our own universe one day. I think that's going to be really cool. Should be wild. Yeah. Thank you very much, spoiler bros. Another mission accomplished. 
He didn't say exactly when that live-action Miles Morales is going to happen, but since Amy Pascal said that they were developing a live-action Miles Morales spinoff movie last year, my early theory right now, just based on what everybody is saying between Marvel and Sony, is that they're waiting till after Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out in theaters to introduce live-action Miles Morales. And it's probably part of their larger plan to cross over the animated Spider-Verse characters into the live-action movies heading into Secret Wars. So here's the deal. They had a little bit of live-action crossover in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, like Donald Glover's Prowler from the MCU is live-action, mixed with the animated Spider-Verse characters. They did the same thing with the Venom characters, too, like he peeks his head into the Venom universe in their live-action, but he's animated. Lord and Miller said that there were actually longer live-action blended scenes with live-action characters and animated characters, but it got a little too crazy, and they wanted to save some of that stuff for Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse to try and perfect it. I think they're using that to test out their ability to actually blend those two types of elements together so that it doesn't look too ridiculous by the time we get to Avengers Secret Wars so that they can actually cameo that version of Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, in Spider-Man 2099, maybe other characters from the Spider-Verse movies in Secret Wars. They even had a brief Easter egg for Miles Morales during Spider-Man Far From Home between Jamie Foxx's Electro and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. You got that suit. You help a lot of poor people. I just thought you was going to be black. Oh, man, I'm sorry. So what they would logically do is just wait till after that to actually do their live-action Miles Morales movie or their version of live-action Miles Morales in the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Because it sounds like they would actually cameo him in one of Tom Holland's Spider-Man sequels like Spider-Man 4, or 5, or 6, whichever one it winds up being. Then he'd go on to his solo movies. Shamik Moore, who is the voice of animated Miles Morales in all the Spider-Verse movies, has been asked about this a couple different times, especially last year when the movie came out. I manifested this. So what are we manifesting now? Live action. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll that was see. literally my next question. I was like, it's. I think it's time to make the jump. I think you're the one to do it. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Let's hope. Let's 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 keep pushing forward. We're campaigning one step at a time. Now, I saw Shamik. You said that if they do live action Miles Morales, which I think the writing's on the wall, it's going to happen at some point. You want to do it, right? Uh, do I want to do it? Absolutely. Hell yeah. So if they wanted to do Spider-Gwen and Jessica Drew in live action, would you guys be game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's been campaigning to have Sony cast him as that live action Miles Morales. My assumption right now is he probably won't wind up winning that role. It'll probably go to a younger actor so they can just have a much longer career. Same way Tom Holland was cast when he was very, very young. I think Marvel and Sony want to keep their options open if they want to do a version of live-action Miles Morales that's from another universe, like the MCU version, instead of the Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse version. But essentially, Sony has been wanting a live-action version of Spider-Man to be in all their Spider-Man spinoff movies. Like, there were all those Easter eggs in the Morbius post credit scene in the Morbius trailer with different versions of Spider-Man Easter eggs from Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield's universe, from Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies. If they want to start using a version of Spider-Man in their movies so badly, they can actually just use a live-action Miles Morales eventually once they introduce him. And they can bring back Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man or Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man to be the older Spider-Man mentor to his younger Spider-Man. Side note, please do not kill one of them off in service of that Miles Morales' origin story. It's funny that Donald Glover actually referenced that. Like, yeah, if Sony wanted to bring me back as Spider-Man, I'd be like the older Spider-Man that they killed for that new Spider-Man Miles Morales' origin story. The funny reason behind that question they were asking him, like, did they bring you back as an apology for not casting you as Spider-Man? Way back in the day, Brian Michael Bendis created the Miles Morales Spider-Man after seeing Donald Glover wear the Spider-Man suit on the Community TV series. If you remember, there was all that fan art featuring Donald Glover as a version of Spider-Man, like could he be a version of Spider-Man at some point? So Brian Michael Bendis was inspired to create Miles Morales Spider-Man, like oh yeah, we could have a Spider-Man who is not Peter Parker. So essentially, Donald Glover in real life inspired the creation of the Miles Morales character, which is why it's so important that you have him in your franchise as a character, even if it's not as Spider-Man. Right now, it is unclear if Marvel wants to actually do live-action Miles Morales references during Spider-Man 4 because apparently there is a war going on between Marvel and Sony over exactly how Spider-Man 4 is going to go down. And it turns out it's Sony who apparently wants to make Spider-Man 4 another major multiverse movie with universe-ending consequences, bringing back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as main characters in the movie with way more scenes than they had in Spider-Man No Way Home. Like, they'd be much bigger characters in the movie in general. 
So when Andrew Garfield Spider-Man teased that he wanted to fight an alien after Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland referenced his Venom in Thanos, Sony was intending on paying that off in Spider-Man 4, apparently. And I think most of us agree that they'd probably be better off waiting till Avengers Secret Wars to give Tom Holland the symbiote so they could be more comic book accurate, because that's how he got the symbiote originally. Like, why not just do the comics? But apparently this drama between Marvel and Sony right now, Kevin Feige wants Spider-Man 4 to be a more ground level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie with a brand new Spider-Man villain from the comics and then Kingpin and also Daredevil. But on the other side of things, Sony wants the movie to be this huge multiverse Avengers level film again with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back. Like if you thought the Spider-Man No Way Home was a big deal, they want to escalate things even further. I think in Kevin Feige's version of Spider-Man 4, Toby and Andrew don't come back until at least Secret Wars. There might be some Easter eggs in Deadpool 3, like some funny Easter eggs from their Spider-Man movies, but I don't think they actually appear on screen until Secret Wars. Let me know in the comments though, if Kevin Feige and Marvel went out with their plan and they make the smaller street level Spider-Man 4 movie with Tom Holland, do you want them to reference live action Miles Morales or do you want them to just wait to like a future Spider-Man sequel? Like I said, there's a bunch of big stuff coming up. Super Bowl trailers. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. I'll post that Deadpool 3 trailer as soon as it releases. Click here for all those brand new Deadpool 3 teaser trailers and click here to learn about all the Andrew Garfield Easter eggs inside the Madam Web movie and their plans for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.